why you decided to come back to the ministry? Well, you know, um, Iver, what Ivers did uh, opened up uh, an opportunity for uh, to boost certain reform processes that was started months ago in Ukraine and we couldn't complete for one or the other reason. And uh, Ivers' resignation caused a lot of reverberations across the globe, I would say. As a result, it created a certain force that would like to use for the good of the country. When I say we, I'm talking about my other colleagues, ministers who resigned earlier, and the cabinet of ministers. We want to use this force for the good of the country to boost certain reforms, necessary reforms that we've been talking for months. And uh, at the emergency meeting of the cabinet, we mentioned a number of principles that should be fulfilled in order for us to go on. One of them is the fair compensation for civil servants. Let's not fool ourselves. It's impossible to perform our duties based on the current compensation that we have for civil servants. We're talking about the private, NASA privatization. The necessary law was passed in the first reading, sent not long ago by the parliament. We need to make the final push to go for the second reading as soon as possible and start the process. And this process will help eliminate a major source of unofficial corrupt income that comes from state-owned enterprises to the pockets of corrupt individuals. More than 3,000 state-owned companies, hundreds of strategic companies. It's, it's, it's nonsense. Some of these strategic companies own only a couple of office buildings in prime locations in Kiev, or in Dnipropetrovsk, or in Odessa, or in Kharkiv. What's stri strategic about them? And strategic importance for the corrupt individuals is that they have a vested interest in the rental agreements. They rent out space, office space for one hryvnia, or one dollar per square meter. In reality, they get 10. We just need to, again, not fool ourselves and push for mass privatization that has been discussed for years. Let's just do it. So we spelled out a number of principles that can help us go on. Otherwise, as we said at the emergency meeting, we will not go on. And we need strict deadlines. Not 12 months, not six months, not three months. We can do it now. There's either the political will to make the change, or we don't go on. But from one side, it's looked like that you achieved something in your Bagrainian, possible Bagrainian, political Bagrainian. Is it the question of privatization or what is it which really pushed you to come back to the cabinet? The window of opportunities that Ivers opened up for me and for my colleagues. Well. We need to use this force created by Ivers for the good of the country. But himself, he don't want to come back to the team. We shall see. Okay, that's good. Okay, see. and maybe to conclude the question about personality, you mentioned during your interview that it could be dangerous for you to name personal personalities because it's we couldn't understand that it's a systematic problem. Mm -hmm. But why do you think Ivers did it, and what? Could, be, could we see like a development of this is, is, is a situation to see more great cardinals coming outside? I think because of what Ivers did, some great cardinals, the so-called great cardinals, may be actually going outside, not inside. Okay. Yes, so what Ivers did, again, caused uh, a lot of reverberations. A lot of people got the point, uh, and uh, the, the shake-up in the system was extremely strong. So this statement will either help the country move forward with uh, supersonic speed, 
at least for a short period of time, or will not, which means that we will not go on. It could look like, um, I mean, stupidly, but with some conspiratorial theories, people said that uh, your decisions, they were lead also in the coordination with Western partners because they come with this famous supportive letter. How do you feel this support from the half of the Western partners? And was it important to you to see it in this kind of process? Well, the government is grateful for the support that we get. Without the support of our foreign friends, it would have been impossible to survive the last 14 months. Of course, when you break the system that has been in existence for 24 years, uh, and when sometimes there is no support from the inside, of course it's great to have support from the outside and to understand that you're on the right track and you're doing something right. So it's, it's great to feel that uh, uh, support, but uh, the more pressure from the inside we get, the more understanding we have that we're doing something right. We also saw a big propaganda campaign leading against you, and um, so maybe it's really a sign that you're doing something good <laughs> in this way. But how are you really working with this subject? What are you doing with this and how to overcome this kind of stuff? Because uh, it's, I it's become very philosophical. You know, and uh, actually, uh, Yuri Vitalievich Lutsenko at the beginning of last year gave me one adv advice, and I'm grateful for that advice. He told me, "Don't read anything. Just don't read and don't pay attention." And um, I learned to filter news, and 99% of the news is paid for news, so. I just learned to filter it out and when there is a true piece of writing and a, a, a expertise type writing then if uh, it's something critical then I pay attention to it, I try to understand and then decide how to react. So uh, I, I became a philosopher in a sense. That's great.